One may also note the wide use of plantain leaves, which are spread to accommodate these things. When the mixture comes to a boil, it is stirred until the preparation becomes ready for consumption. Weaving used to be a virtual cottage industry when cotton and dyes were available locally. Practiced by the women folk exclusively, it involves a complex and elaborate use of hand and material, a tradition which has been passed down from one generation to another. This artisanal skill has a cycle of origin myths surrounding it, and these narratives have found their way into the designs and patterns which are till today found on woven textiles. There was a time when the people cultivated cotton and grew host plants for rearing the airy silkworms and for obtaining dyes. Memories of these attributes are now only registered in folk songs and stories. Deforestation has also been responsible for the disappearance of plants and trees that used to be sources of vegetable dyes. Nowadays, this art form is confined to certain households where young weavers practice under the supervision of expert matrons. The designs are many, but the commonest motif used is that of the eye. There are variations of the design found on stoles, sashes, wraparounds, and scarves. Due to the absence of indigenous cotton, mill manufactured thread is purchased from the local market and used. In another household, we observed wool being used on the loom. This again marks a deviation from the usual practice of using only cotton but it also shows improvisation taking place as per the requirement. Narratives are the engines for the creation of many of the items of material culture, and it is common to see how raw material is collected and obtained from the surrounding natural environment. How each source is identified and treated how the material is prepared through the application of both simple and elaborate processes, and finally fashioned into an article of use. The ubiquitous bamboo is once again put to good use, and in this case, a kudoi, or swing, is made from lengths of the plant. After the bamboo lengths have been cut to required sizes, it is only a matter of fitting the pieces and latching pegs at appropriate places to set up the swing. The sound produced by it adds to the rhythm of village life. These are the hands adept at creating the simple as well as the complex. With a few manipulations of the fingers, the shaved bamboos take the shape of a pigeon, sturdy and real enough to amuse a child for a time. Metallurgy and iron ore extraction, and casting in particular, have been associated with the Kasi community since time immemorial. Mythological narratives speak about the detailed deliberations that took place on metallurgy in the Third Council of the Gods. Until the late 19th century, there were still in existence a number of manufacturing and trading hubs located mostly in the plateau region 
of the Kasi Hills. Traces of this activity are also found in the Bhoi areas, and information about it has been reconstructed from songs and stories. Understandably, iron was used to fashion implements, tools, and weapons. Iron is beaten so that it becomes malleable and easy to manipulate into desired size and shape. This process takes time as constant firing and sweat yielding labor is required. Meanwhile, Ba'rani Maring, who had been helping Stal Makri, the blacksmith, goes to the nearby thickets to fetch material for making the spear shaft. The shaft is prepared and hasping the shaft end is carefully executed using finely shaved bamboo strips. This procedure is not unlike the hasping of earth diggers, common to these parts not so very long ago. The blacksmith now has the spearheads almost ready and he files them to obtain precision and pointedness. The spearheads are of two kinds, and each are fitted into the two shafts. They are then tested for heft, balance, and worthiness. The kupor, or the spear, is a favorite example of weaponry used for defensive purposes and for hunting. This small-sized village smithy still manufactures specimens of these tools on orders received. The use of the bow and arrow in many parts of the Bhoi area is negligible. And the only weapons which work on the spring action principle are the batur and the sulay truck. The batur is a catapult which deploys balls made from mud and baked in the sun or fire. And in the hands of experts, it is known to be lethal. The suloy truck, a bamboo gun complete with barrel and trigger, and a favorite handpiece of boys, is used for hunting small creatures such as field mice and frogs. Rice beer, or yat um, is a popular drink in the Bhoi areas. In fact, there is no ceremony which can be performed and conducted successfully without rice beer. It is used as libation, shared and imbibed as a sacramental item. The availability of quality rice here also encourages the people to manufacture this frothy product which becomes an effective and pleasant drink to refresh oneself during hot weather conditions. The base material is rice, which is fermented for at least a week along with yeast. When it is ready, it is poured through a bamboo strainer called a snut and collected in containers. It is affirmed that to get the best out of the yat um is to drink it from a jho or a bamboo cup. There is no community that does not have a musical tradition. The urge to produce music by way of vocals is natural, and human beings have since ages learned how to develop suitable accompaniments by way of instrumentation. In some communities, the musical tradition is attributed to the divine, while in others, 
It is the human agency which is responsible for introducing this form of expression that can lay claim to be the chief means of entertainment across civilization and cultures. One of the most ancient forms of musical expression is percussion. Drums used in the Bhoi areas fall in the similar category as the ones found widely prevalent in the Kasi Jaintia hills. Kaksing and Kabom referring to the small and the big drum respectively. The duitara is a favorite of balladeers and singers. Another popular instrument is the marangot, which is also a stringed instrument played with a bow. The marangot is a necessary instrument during funerals. There is also the tanguri, which is considered to be the queen of Kasi musical instruments. Made from a species of bamboo called shken, it is the lead item in festivals and dances. Children the world over are more inclined to entertainment which involves vigorous action and adventurous execution. The Kula Sopra is a gymnastic event which involves executing acrobatic movements on bamboo poles fashioned for the purpose. The enthusiasm is evident in the number of boys lining up to have a go. Girls are seen occupied with a game which is called kaladieng or tossing the sticks. A game which involves skill and reflex, it also facilitates counting abilities. Another game which attracts the boys is the greasy pole, which is more than eight feet in height and puts to the test the boys' agility and strength. This contraption is the kruo, a bamboo puzzle which challenges the player to exercise his logical thinking processes. It requires the unraveling of bamboo strips from the main body, and the game is described as releasing the mole. Creativity and design sense are the foundational building blocks of concepts, ideas, and notions. It is in the scheme of things that the human agency externalizes its cognition and apprehends the wealth that the natural world offers. It is then that we see a collaboration taking place to embody and extend these ideas. Fundamental as they are, to the civilizational and developmental processes, they exhibit their functioning in the way in which raw material is refined so that the byproducts become naturally suitable for use. These byproducts become grafted in the everyday story of life through knowledge and skill. Their usefulness becomes a blessing unto the work they inspire, help, and perform. While forces of social and cultural transformation can be seen to be at play, the innate sense of harmony imbued in the people and their use of material culture is profoundly reflected in the experience of life and living.